Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Phoenix Trading Strategies, um, where strategic knowledge and information allows you to trade successfully. Today is April 10th. It is 9.04 a.m. Eastern Time. Before we continue, let's go to the disclaimer. Disclaimer. Future stocks and spot currency trading have large potential rewards, but also large potential risk. You must be aware of the risk and be willing to accept them in order to invest in the future stocks and forex markets. Don't trade with money you can't afford to lose. This website is neither a solicitation nor an offer to buy, sell future stocks or forex. No representation is being made that any account will or is likely to achieve profits or losses similar to those discussed on this website. Past performance of indicators or methodology are not necessarily indicative of future results. Being that said and done. For those of you that are joining us for the first time, welcome. For those of you that have been with us for a long time, welcome again. <laughs> Let's go over the website real briefly. Um, I think it's important. I'm sure that many of you have looked at our home page. As much as it sounds like a conspiracy theory, it's really not. It's the plain truth. Um, I'm giving it to you from a perspective, from an insider's perspective. As you know, uh, many of you know, I used to be a broker for one of the largest futures commission merchants in the U.S. And I had the privilege of working with teams that developed software for our company and that developed the first electronic communications network for the retail market. Uh, for the first ECN, where we actually took all the bank feeds and made them into one, under one aggregator. So we were really designing cutting-edge technology back in the day when everyone was just still a bucket shop, pretty much taking the opposite trades of everyone's retail trades. So we took it to the next level. So a lot of the information that you have found in this website is actually really in, really insightful. Um, one of the things that, that we pride ourselves in is that we really know what the banks are doing. We can see it. Uh, it's mathematically proven. Uh, the algorithms that we've designed have been designed to basically decode the market maker's intent. And that's a strong statement to make and not that many people can stand behind it. We do. You know, we're willing to trade on the live edge of the market to show you how this works. Uh, such as the cases that that is why we have the European session every Thursday at two thirty AM Eastern time where we trade the London Open and we trade for two hours. And in those two hours we don't really go over indicators. We basically look for live trades in the market. And usually we'll come out ahead and we'll make between 100 to 200 pips in a matter of two, two and a half hours. So when you look at it from that perspective, then you have to come to the conclusion that maybe, just maybe, we're doing something right. This week was a very spectacular week. We, we made over 1,000 pips in trades, and you can find these trades here actually in the blog. Just hit blog and go to latest trades, and you'll see this was starting Monday, of course. All you have to do is just click, and you can see the trades that we took on all the pairs. This is what you should have made if you would have had one standard lot. If you would have had a mini, well, calculate about $862, a total of 941 pips in five trades in one afternoon, and I say afternoon because for me it is afternoon. I live in the West Coast in California, so all these trades were taken on uh, the Australian rate announcement, and a spectacular trade. I actually had one of my students with me who I was uh, coaching when this happened, and, you know, he said, it's very funny because he said, well, you know, that what we're doing is criminal. <laughs> I go, it's not criminal. <laughs> you know, what we're doing is realistic. Uh, this was another trade that we took. And this, this was one that I took um, during the uh, Japanese monetary policy statement. And I made a 
I think it was about 104 pips. I had two losing trades, which were very minimal, 14 pips, 10 pips. But I had five other winning trades. And I took all the yen pairs, all the yen pair trades based on that. But more importantly, it's not about how many trades you take. It's about the fact that we're able to identify the direction of the trade with precision before the announcement actually takes place. And that has a lot of meaning. Um, you know, I'm not going to kid you, you know, last Friday during On Farm Peril, we took a hit. It was about 240 pips, but April 1st, we were able to make over 200 pips. Uh, in reality, it was about 240 pips, if I'm not mistaken. No, it was 145 pips on one, and then another 98 pips. So, yeah, it was a little bit... Uh, these were trades that we that were taken. Let me see. What was this? This was uh, this was the European session, if I'm not mistaken. And then, the, yeah, this was the European session. You can see the video because we all, every week we put up videos so that you can see what we've done. You know, one thing is for us to talk about it. Another one, is, another thing is for us to actually show you. So. These were the trades that were taken uh, during the night. Uh, pound U.S., pound New Zealand, pound yen, pound Aussie. 145 pips in one night, in two hours. That's pretty spectacular. And then in the morning, I forgot what I was trading, but I took another trade and made another 98 pips <clears throat> on an announcement. Can't. You know, can't recall which one it was. But what we like to do is basically show you our winners and our losers. We're not ashamed of it. There's a humanistic side of trading. It's called being human. Errors can be made. However, I think that one of the things that we've shown here is that our recovery, even after a bad trade, is faster and greater than what you can ever imagine. And all we're doing is following the system. Now, this system is not automated. You actually have to manually input your trades. That makes a difference. However, the one thing that you will discover is that it is not that difficult to do. You know, we feel that we've created a system that is user-friendly, and more importantly, not just that it's user-friendly, but that it is insightful, informative, and removes two things that, is, that traders have, fear and doubt from their decision process. That's the one thing that we can't overcome. Now, the other thing that we can't overcome is that maybe we consistently need to be in a trade. Now, that's the wrong way of trading. What we show you is when you shouldn't be in a trade, and when you should be paying attention to the trade. And so we've created a number of tools to help you with that. Now on the About Us page, that's pretty much about me and my journey. I want to make, make it very clear that I became a licensed broker in 2008. I hold a Series 3 and a Series 34. I am currently not registered with anyone at this moment. I will be registering very shortly as a CTA. Um, Many things that I learned in the process. The first one, chart pattern recognition. Some of the best traders out there. 5%, the 5% that succeed understand chart pattern recognition. But in actuality, only 3% get to make it because only they're able to actually visualize it. I was never really good at chart pattern recognition, I have to admit, because I, I, I started off as a retail trader just like you over 12 years ago. So in 2008, I came to the conclusion, number one, I have to learn more. What I know as a retail trader is not enough. From the courses that I've taken with educators, they're not showing me anything different that I, that I need in order to eliminate fear and doubt from my decision process. And number three is to demonstrate consistency and growth as a trader in my account. So one of the things that we show you are those secrets that will make the difference. 
understanding how the market makers deceive the retail traders. Um, very important, how volume price analysis reveals high frequency trading. We actually show you where the high frequency trading actually takes place. And fourth, which is my theory, currency portfolio rebalancing. This not only is it a theory of mine, but to some, real, to some degree a reality of what actually happens in the market. You see, we look as a retail trader, we look at it from a simplistic perspective. The banks look at it from perspective that they need to balance their risk. They're all about risk management. They're not trading on the offensive. They're trading on the defensive. You and I are trading on the offensive, which is different. So how can we, how can we understand what the banks are doing when we're doing it and looking at it from the wrong side of the train? Now, you get on the right side of the train, and you're going with the flow because you're understanding why they're doing, why they're making the decision process, why they've created these protocols, why you can't seem to get a grip on the trade. We'll show you how. If you're a good trader, we'll make you better. If you're beginning, we'll make you shine. You'll understand it from a perspective that you never thought actually existed, and that makes a difference. As for myself, these are basically the endorsements that I've had and lines of expertise that I hold in this field. So you're dealing with someone that really understands the market, that really understands the protocols that the banks are following. And that makes a difference. You know, I've always believed that one cannot be guided by a blind man. You continue to be blind. One must be guided by someone that actually understands and can actually show you something that you've never seen before. It's taken me years, 12 years of my life, to accumulate this knowledge that I've shared with you. So in many cases, it's very true. The indicators do one thing, but the insight that I give you does another. So if you want to read a little bit more about the indicators, you're free to do so. <clears throat> Just click on the picture, and then it'll give you a description of what our indicators do. It'll make a difference. It will show you the path that you need to be on. So for the time being, you know, I think it's important that traders realize that currency portfolio rebalancing is not only a theory, but is in actuality what the banks are doing. One, understanding that protocol has allowed us, has allowed me and my team to develop a suite of indicators that creates that picture that you can now count on to see what the actual trade truly is. And that's why we've been able to guide quite a number of you, quite a number of you <coughs> into this market to no longer fear the trade, but to look forward to it. Because <coughs> now you can understand it. So let's go to the calendar, and we'll go from there. Today, quite a bit of information came out. Um, in the UK at around 4.30 a.m. Eastern Time, manufacturing production, industrial production, construction output, numbers were not that great. We are bullish in the dollar, and it's getting stronger than ever. The Canadian housing starts, great number, you know. Uh, actually, right now, right right at the announcement, it it basically just took off. The Canadian recovered against the dollar. Not a lot but enough to make a change. Uh, employment change, unemployment rate pretty much stayed intact. It was actually better than expected. They were expecting a higher number. And import prices weren't really the greatest, quite honestly. Could have been better. We're going to be expecting uh, GDP estimates from the UK and federal budget balance later on this afternoon. <coughs> Not really a whole lot of information to be going off on right now. So can't really ex you can't really expect us to find trades right now when there are none, and that's okay. Like I said, sometimes the best thing is not to trade. 
Now, don't get me wrong. I look for trades. I live for giving you trades. It is my goal every week to show you that you can find a reliable trade with Phoenix Trading Strategies. Why? Because I want you to understand that trading, number one, is hard. But number two, it's accessible. You can do it. I'm living proof of it. It took, granted, it took me 12 years to get to this level to understand all the knowledge that <clears throat> we've been sharing with you, not only in the you know, market knowledge, but technology that we've created, which no one out there really has. What we have is unmatched at this particular moment. So let's go over the chart real quickly. And this is basically what happened today with the Canadian. <clears throat> As you can see, it came down pretty drastically. Now, would I have taken this trade off of a five minute? Not really. Now, the next question is, would I have taken this trade off of a 20 minute? That's yet to be seen. Why? We're going to go over the indicator so I can show you why. <clears throat> Normally in our news announcement, there are certain time frames that we look for. And if we don't have that, then we don't take the trade. Now, our favorite algorithm and the one that just sets the tone for our trades is this one, the power dots. And let me change this to the pointer. The power dots is an algorithm that we've created, which basically isolates quite a few things. Number one, it isolates the price level that the market makers or banks have defined to do their high frequency trading around. Why? Because they need to offset some of their positions and some of their risk before continuing to drive this currency. Now, we see it before everyone else does. And it's incredible because when you really think about it, you know, to make such a bold statement and to live by it is unique. But Let's go over what we, had, what we did during the European session. Two things happened during the European session. All the trades had taken place except for one. One trade. We didn't have a whole lot of trades this European session, but we did have one trade. And it was that one trade that made a difference for us. It was the pound Swissy. Unique as it was, we analyzed six different pairs, and two things happened. And I took two trades on this. I shorted it, and then it went long, and then I shorted it again. When we took this trade, we took it because this was coming off of a higher time frame of power dots. Now, it had already started you know, to go up, but it hit this level, and it stopped. And then it came down here, and I said, if it breaks below this level, because all the other pound pairs had already gone short, I said, it's going to go short. And it did. It was from my entry all the way down here, a 43 pip move. Some of you made 35 pips. Some of you made 30 pips. I made 28 pips on this one. Now, this was at 4.30 4 a.m. in the morning. Then we closed it. And then I said, you know what, this is going to reverse. I know this. Because it bounced up pretty aggressive. I said, the next candle, based on the volume, vol vol volume is going to go up. And it did. And I picked up another 30 pips. From here to here, I'm, I believe I picked up 35 pips. So I made 27, and then I made another 29 pips. Then I shorted it again, but I actually lost on this one like 14 pips, something like that. So it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, I still came out positive. And then I did something even more unique. I traded the Bank of England announcement. And I took all these trades. One, two, three, four, five, and six. No, it was actually five, five trades. So I shorted it before the announcement. I shorted this. Why? Because I knew I had a signal that it was going to go short. 
power dots formed here again at this level. It, these power dots, when they form on a higher time frame, you don't doubt the trade. You take it. It went short. I picked up about 107 pips on this trade alone. Pound yen, 43 pips. This one, I lost four pips on the pound swissy. That, you know, like I said, it wasn't much. Uh, on the pound New Zealand, I lost 20, almost 24 pips. And the pound Aussie, I made about 11 pips. Not bad. <clears throat> now, I told most of you that some of these trades were really, really unique from that perspective. And to be careful trading the rate announcement from the Bank of England, because you couldn't really tell what they were going to do. And really, you couldn't. First, they went long, but then they didn't break these levels here. And these levels were the ones that we were looking for for them to do for them to actually trade above trades went against me on these I'd like to say no more than 10 15 pips at the very beginning and then and then it just went in the direction it was supposed to and I never looked back so when you really think about it I'm not doing anything different that I don't teach or preach live in the webinars. Everything that I do is exactly what you see in our videos. So if it looks simplistic to you, then guess what? It must make sense. It's that simple. So if I'm showing you something that actually does work, then guess what? If it works for me, don't you think it'll work for you? I'd say so. So look at it from that perspective. Now, in one night, you know, I ended up picking another, let me see, it was 20, 28 one way, 29 the other, and then another 28 one way, 29 pips another, and then another 150 pips minus uh, 28 pips. So I ended up picking up another 180 pips for the week. No, I didn't trade last night. I was tired. <clears throat> but in one week, I ended up generating 104 plus 941, a total of 1,224 pips. Granted, last week I lost 240 pips on NFP. But two days before, I had made 240 pips. So for the month, I'm still up. And that's in the first week alone. So when you ask yourself, is this a system that can generate you the results that you're looking for? It, it, it is, and it might. Now, there is no perfect world. Every time you take a trade, there is risk. However, we minimize that risk. How and why? Look at this formula. Look at what it does. When, it, when this algorithm starts to kick in, it shows you two things. Number one, it isolates the price level that they're not going to break, which in this case, this would be the extreme of extremes. Now, this price level had already been shown in, the smaller time, in, the small, in a bigger time frame. This was in 180 minute. This was in a 240 minute. So as soon as it broke below these levels, it was on. Now this was during the US session. This was during the Asian session. The minute it opened below this level, that's it. No tomorrow. You had the power dots coming down, which is a rarity. But when it does this, take the trade. Short it. Throw the kitchen sink and then some at them because they're going to give it up. This was a 50 pip trade. Now, is your question, well, I'm looking for 100 pips. I'm looking for 50 to 200 pips. That's fine and dandy. But again, you may not get that trade. However, 
you will get the trade that is more suitable for you. Why? You're reducing your risk because it isolates the price levels. Number two is that you'll know the direction that it's heading. And number three, you can pretty much isolate the exit, not because of the moving averages that you see here, because I put these moving averages on purpose. This is a 50, this is an 800, and this is a 200 exponential moving average. But they do not impact my decision process in any form or fashion. I put them here to show you exactly why they have been counter-programmed. Why do I say that? Well, the one thing is that when we get a signal in the power dots, you would never, based on moving averages, take this trade short. However, we would. Why? Because the power dots are telling us that they're not going to go long any further. They have isolated the trade to go short. So they're basically giving you the direction. Now, granted, we look at it in different time frames, not just one. And that makes a difference. Question. So let's ask, let's answer a few. How do you choose which currency pair to trade? Good question. We'll go to, we'll, we'll answer that and the CAD <coughs> question. So, how do we choose a pair to trade? Good question. We created a tool that would make your life and ours easier. This is a market analyzer. And this thing is programmed with our algorithms to announce to you what pairs you should be paying attention to in what time frame. Now, you can have multiple market analyzers up. Normally, I just put one up during the session because GoToWebinar takes up too much memory. And I'm not going to have the, um, the computer bogged down. Now, you see how this one started to go ballistic, the CAD Yen? but it didn't say analyze me. So let's say that I have it on a 60 minute. I'm looking, or, you know, let's go to a higher time frame just to be curious. Let's say we put this on 180 minute or 240. You know, let's, let's, be, let's be aggressive. The 240 is a four hour time frame. Now, why would I look at a, at a four-hour time frame? Well, let me let you in on a little secret. The banks do not make their decision process off of the smaller time frames. They make their decision processes off of higher time frames, a 720, a 240, a 480, a 180, a 120. So when this bad boy tells you, that there's a trade, and here there isn't any right now. Not one, not one single trade to look for on the 240. So if I'm looking for a specific direction of a trade, I'm looking at the higher time frames. I may look at the 720. I may look at the 180. I may look at the at the 240. I may look at the 480. I may look at. I may stick to the 60 minute. Why does that make a difference? Well. The reason why that makes a difference is because now you can use the market analyzer to identify those specific trades and time frames that you're looking for to get a better grip of the trade, to, under, to isolate the best trades. See, the banks do not trade the same pairs every day. Anyone that tells you that, is lying and misleading to you. Now, you can say, well, the pound, dollar, and the euro have been shorting for the past two days. Yes, because that was a swing trade that they identified three days ago, and we actually caught it. However, we didn't stay in it, but we caught it. So here, for instance, on the 60-minute, there's only one, the U.S. CAT. On the 60-minute, let's take a look at that and see why that one made sense on the 60 minute and would you have traded off of that information I mean it came down short <clears throat> and there was a question 
you know, where would, where would I have identified that trait? So if I'm looking for power dots, I can't be looking in each and every pair. It just doesn't work that way. Now here, for instance, it doesn't apply, but they are going to the trend stop. So in this case, they were trading off of this level. Now this is a 480 level, so let's take a look at this. Let's go to the 240. Let me re remove the uh, volume indicator because I think at this point it will slow us down and I want to move fast. Okay, so this one here is uh, not a good boy. Oh, I see we have to add more data. 35 days, let's add 40. Okay, let's see here. See here, this level, this was a 240. This level up here was higher, or is it smaller, I think it was a 180. Let's see, a 180 level and a 240. So they bounced off of the 180 level and went short. Look at this one up here. Would you have taken this trade here days back and shorted it? If I would have seen these power dots form here on the 180 level, no, make no mistake, I would have thrown the kitchen sink at them, and I did. I did go short. However, I didn't stay in the trade. I don't recall why. But look at the amount of pips that this thing generated from top to bottom. In three days, 272 pips. So if you're looking for swing trades, this is a system that will give it to you. If you're looking for trades on a smaller time frame, such as this, then it'll isolate the price levels that they're trading off of, which will make the difference. Now, the question is, would why would I have not taken this trade here? Maybe I would have taken it off of a 90 minute. Maybe. And I really don't think so. Why? Because it had already broken above this level. And it was a news announcement, so it was a little weird on that end. But look at here. This one bounced off of a previous level. Right off of it, it never looked back. One power dot. All it takes is one, one power dot will make the difference in your trading, especially if they're trading off of a specific level. But more importantly is, look, they went from a 180 to a 480 level. 180 to 480. That's huge. So they do respect these levels because they set them, not us. We're just basically disclosing them to you. 231 pips in four days, not bad. Would I have stayed in the trade four days? No, I don't have the tolerance to do so. That's just me. I have the tolerance to stay in the trade for one day. Would I have taken this trade? You betcha. I would have thrown the kitchen sink and my mother's at them. 106 pips. I would have picked up maybe 80, 90 pips on this trade. So. The one thing that you have to come to terms with is, okay, so how do I isolate the best trade? Very simple. Use a market analyzer. Let it guide you. It'll take you to the promised land. Believe me, I've got guys that are doing very well with this, and they have no problem. You know, sometimes we use the 720 to isolate the higher time frames. Why? Because once a week or twice a week, there will be those trades that form off of a 720, and they're huge. I mean, these are some extravagant swing trades that take two, three days. But what's interesting about these is that we're not looking to stay in a trade two, three days. We're looking for the highest probability trade out there. That's the difference. The highest probability trade, the best one, the very best of the best. And when that happens, then you know that you have a trade. And it may be that one day of the week. You know, I had a conversation yesterday with a with a new a new customer, a new student, and you know, I told him why hasn't he been in the room? I was very blunt about the question. Why? Because whenever we 
have these sessions on Mondays and Fridays, we do look for trades, but sometimes there aren't any trades to be looking at at that particular moment, so we may not have any, but we do look for trade setups for later that afternoon or even later that evening. And then more importantly is that during the European session on Thursday mornings is when we actually trade live. We do not hold back. And we look for specific trades. We do not look to be in the market. We look to we look for a reason not to be in the market. How does that sound? But when we find a reason to be in the market, make no mistake. We are not afraid. We know exactly what our risk is. We know exactly what our exit is. So we know the outcome before it even takes place. Why? Because we've isolated the levels to the next level. If I know that it's going to bounce from this level and it's going to break this level and then go here and then up here, or at least here, I have pretty much isolated an outcome. So if I take a trade from here to here, that's 88 pips. Now if I let that trade play out, then guess what? Suddenly that trade becomes a 117 pip trade. And some people ask, well, you know, I just don't have the tolerance to stay in the trade that long. Two things are happening. You're over leveraging your account and you have fear embedded in your soul at that point because God forbid it goes against you 10 pips. You start to go into have an anxiety attack. So what we teach you is trade with less money and let the trade play out. Why? Because they have to finish the cycle. They have already programmed this in. Their, their algorithms must complete the cycle before changing. And they base it off of news events. So what my partner and I did is that we are creating a market report right now for those of you that have the software. You're going to get the first one for free. Why? Because I want to make your life easy this coming month. It's going to show you every news release that you should be paying attention to. It isolates the amount of pips that they move per release so that you don't waste your time every day looking at trades. I don't trade every day. All of you know that I look at trades three days out of the week. Three days out of the week. And in those three days, or maybe even four, I'm looking to accomplish one thing. To try and make and find trades that would generate 300 pips a week. That's it. That's my goal. Now, sometimes I do it. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'll do it in a day. I'll come close to meeting my quota, and then maybe I'll take another trade, and it'll you know, erase that. But then I'll find a few other trades and I'll recover, and then I'll find that one day, that one announcement, which will make the difference, which in this case, this week was the Australian rate announcement. That's the one that made the difference. That's the one that said, wow, what in the world did this guy do? That's the one that said, I really need to take a look at this, because there aren't that many people out there right now making 900 pips in one trade. You're right, there aren't. The market has changed. The banks have changed the game. And they're doing it because they don't like to lose. <clears throat> See, this indicator here is not a leading indicator of mine because it's not. It is lagging. Why? Because it's based off of price action. So, but it shows you one thing. It acts like a radar. It defines each currency based on color and how it's trading against the portfolio of eight major pairs. So you can actually see in advance or you can actually see how they are trading 
and, ba and balancing the risk in certain pairs. For instance, here, the Swiss franc is almost at a level that cannot be sustained and will have to be weakened. Same with the Canadian, same with the British pound. This is the five minute. Here, the dollar is weak. We both know that the dollar is strong. But on a five minute, it's showing dollar weakness, yen weakness, New Zealand weakness, Australian weakness. So if I look at this, and I'm looking for currencies that I want to trade based on extremes, I may want to look at definitely the U.S. CAT, definitely the pound dollar, and the, the, the U.S. Uh, Swissy. Why? Because the dollar is going to get stronger. So does that mean that this trade right here, if we go to the smaller time frames, will in actuality bounce back up? Yes. Why? Because it was already going up. The only reason it came all the way back down is because of the fact that the news was pretty decent for them. Now, next question is, why would I not take this trade? Well, I'll tell you a reason why I will. Why I would take this trade is because, see these power dots here? They came right back to this level, exactly to it. 125.76. This is a five minute. Okay, but look, it went from this level to this level, came up, came down, reconfirmed. You have a pivot here, went back up, and then went up again. But now it looks like they're going to come all the way down to this level, 125.39. It's right here waiting for them. Now, why would I not take this trade? Because it already initiated. I don't follow trades. And that's what happened during our European session. There were 10 trades that all had, had already kicked in. And we didn't follow one trade. But we did take one trade, one out of all of them, which was a 40 pip move total. And we ended up taking between 30 and 35 pips out of that trade. But it was the best trade for us because it fit all the components that we needed. So what? Manage our risk. Two, determine our outcome. And three, define our entry with precision. Here, I didn't have a defined entry. So I would not have taken this trade. I would have avoided it. You know, I look for these levels to reconfirm. And if I see them, I'm all over them. And that question is, okay, where would your entry have been? You see this pivot, this magenta dot right here? That would have been my reasoning to take that trade. So do the power dots work? Yes. Will it get you into trades before everyone else? It might. At least it'll announce the direction that, they're, that they've already defined to take. Now, granted, after it bounced back down, many people said, oh, this is going to go short. Sure it is. And it, it's going to go short. Sure it is. They've already defined their plan of action. It's like chess. They've already defined their moves 10 steps ahead of you. What we've done is that we've created an 11th step ahead of them. So we can actually see what they're doing before they actually do it. And so that gives us the insight that we need to make a difference in our account. See, this is a 10-minute. I would not have taken this trade, but I would have l taken this trade. Why? It formed here. The power dots are here. It's forming off of a 240-minute right here. They love the four-hour levels. Love the four-hour levels. Let me repeat that. Love the four-hour level. You will love the four-hour level. 57 pips. That's not, you know, nothing that you turn away from. But look, here it came to this. It's, come, it's going to come to this lower here, 125.60. But again, I don't follow trades. It's not my thing. Would I have taken it Would I have really taken it after this? Yes. Would I have taken it in between here? Oh, yeah. Make no mistake. Any one of these candles would have been my entry. Good question. Can you use this on MT4? The answer is no. The reason why 
is because MT4 is limited. Why is it limited? MT4 only has minute data. You cannot use the tick data the way we use it here. And so a lot of our algorithms would not work. I'm trying to program it, but just not having the luck. And so these algorithms require a professional platform. NinjaTrader is the best platform that we've discovered that our algorithms work efficiently. So, based on this information, the question is, does it make sense for you to use NinjaTrader? Let me tell you something. When I was a broker, the most popular platform that a lot of my clients used was MT4. It was free. Lots of scripts, lots of EAs, lots of indicators based on old, lagging, mathematical formulas and indicators. None of them had success. Very few had success. And I say that very, very, very direct. Why? Because I had a thousand accounts. I had a thousand clients in my own book and I helped build a division of 6,000 clients. So I think I know what I'm talking about. I was able to see the percentage of retail traders that failed, which was very high compared to a very low percentage of retail traders that were very insightful, very in, intuitive traders that had success. Very few. I dealt with money managers. I dealt with CTAs. I dealt with software developers. I dealt with everyone you could possibly imagine. Proprietary desk traders. You name it, I dealt with them. So I was able to really, really define who had it and who didn't. Now, the retail traders lost because they were using a platform that was free, not professional, would never allow them to use certain indicators that they needed to really get a grip on the market and pretty much made for gambling. Now, I'm not going to kid you. I used to love MT4. It made me a lot of money as a broker. But it never really made my clients a lot of money. And that's the problem. Very few. And those that were using it, were using a different charting package. E-Signal, Ninja, you name it. I'll, any one of the pros. And so that made the difference. They were using much more professional charting packages to make their decisions from. That's how you use NinjaTrader. I'm not telling you that you need to trade off of NinjaTrader because I have clients that don't. They trade off of MT4 because they find it more user-friendly to execute their trades from. However, they don't use MT4's charting to make their decision process because, in very few words, it sucks. It's no good. If you're not willing to invest in your business, you're going to lose. The banks know it, and so do I. The game is rigged. You have no advantage. You're in a game where they make you believe that you can win, but you can't. Until now. We're the ones that have leveled the playing field. Why? Because we can actually define when their algorithms are going, are basically setting up to do something foolish. It's called currency portfolio rebalancing. Now we're going to bring in the volume indicator. But before that, I'm going to explain to you these indicators real quickly. So these are the power dots. These are pivot points. These little magenta dots are pivots. They use them and so do we. Why? Because they map out the next levels. And it's a beautiful thing when you know what the next level is going to be. Because then they just go and go and go and go and go and never come back. It's like the energy, energy money. It goes and goes and goes. 
Now, these dots here that you see, these are trend dots. The candles trade around them. Nothing extravagant, you know, not a big secret. It isn't. However, they're very helpful and very insightful because they are trend dots. This is a trend stop. Now, we've modified this, and these are actually plus signs. When you really look at them, you can see they're not dots, they're plus signs. So these trend, this trend stop basically just keeps you in the trend. Once it's broken, then you're no longer short, you're long. Then when that happens, you'll see that the sentiment goes from a slightly bearish to slightly bullish to aggressively bullish. The way I use this, if, I'm in a, if, my, if my entry is here, then the minute it moves up, I just move my, from my stop loss to my entry to maybe five pips. And then I just let it run. I let the trade unfold. Why? Because I know where the next level is going to be. If I know the next level that they're going to hit, that made me a market wizard. And I'm no wizard, but I'm very good at identifying the levels. And these are levels that you can't see anywhere else because no other algorithm is defining them as good as ours. See this one? From here all the way to here. Granted, we map them out, you know, we draw the lines, but my God, man, I want you to really think about this. We're giving you the blueprint, the actual map of the trade. Oh, my God. That, to me, is more important than anything, because if I understand the map that they're, gonna, that they're going to fulfill and play, guess what? I have no more concerns about losing sleep. I use this bad boy to tell me, hey, pay attention. There are some trades that are coming up. Wake up. So maybe I'll have this in a 20-minute, you know, just to show you where some of them have plotted. <laughs> And that will save me from actually losing sleep. But more importantly, if I know the date, the days, and news announcements that I need to be paying attention for, because that's when they're setting up these levels, I'm not trading the news. Oh, no, 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 no. Make no mistake. I'm trading the levels because they've predefined what they're going to do when that news announcement kicks. See this one here, and let's see the Euro-Yen. The Euro Yen announced power dots uh, on the 20 minute, so let's go to the 20 minute. Look right here, during the Asian session, this thing told you go short, not go long, go short. Let me repeat that. Power dots form, what did they tell you? They isolated what? The price level that was not going to be broken any further. And that it wasn't going to go long anymore. It was going to go short. So what would you have yielded on this trade? 144 pips. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but 144 pips ain't bad. This was another trade, and this one had a pivot. I love pivots. When the pivots form with the power dots, you know, that's when I, you know, I have feelings that make my skin tingly. 146 pips. Would you have gotten at least 100? Yes. 50? Definitely. So if we can show you how to average between 30 and 50 pips a day, will that make a difference in your life? I think so. Well, if I can show you how to hit between 50 and 100 pips a day when you need to trade, and you do it three to four days out of the week, will it make a difference for you? I think so. Can you lose? Of course, you can lose. Can you win? Yes. There's a balance. You win, you lose. 
but your winners will outperform your losers. And that's what I've been doing. I've been showing people when to trade and when not to trade. Because the biggest problem that we all have is that we want to be in the market 24-7. You want to feel that adrenaline rush. I get a rush out of these trades when I know that I'm going to win. Forget the fact that the banks are going to win. No, no, no. I want to win. I'm here to win. I'm not here to lose. And if you're here to learn how to trade correctly, then this is it. This is the final frontier. You made it. Congratulations. It's been a long journey. This is where you need to be. This is what you need to use. And this is what will make the difference in your trading. Now, I'm not cheap. Make no mistake. I'm expensive. However, my results are staggering. And so will yours be. And believe me, a lot of my customers, clients, and now friends, because almost all of you that have this software have become my friends, you have access to me pretty much 24-7, except that I have parameters. I sleep. And I tell people, do not wake me up in the middle of the night because I love my sleep. I don't trade the European session every day. Twice a week, maybe. But I love trading the Asian session. Why? Because during the Asian session, I can pick up 30, 40 pips when I need to and be done. Or if there's a specific news announcement, a rate announcement, GDP, you know, anything like that. Unemployment numbers, ISM numbers, uh, construction, you name it. If the numbers are going to be good and I've predefined how many pips the move could be, then I may be interested in looking at that. Not because I'm going to trade the news. No. No, no, no. Because I know the news. I know that they've predefined their decision before the release is done. That makes a big difference. Now, sometimes I may be wrong, and I admit it. Again, there's a humanistic side to the trade. We're all human. However, there are those moments where I don't let my emotions define my decision. I let the software do it. And I'm very cold about that because the software, like one of my students told me yesterday, the people that have gotten it have gotten it because of one thing. They are listening to the software and visualizing it. The software is telling you something. You just have to listen to it. In this case, if you would have been listening here and watching it, it would have told you, don't go long, go short. That's really what it, what, it, what it did. In no way did this tell you to go long. It told you to go short. That made the difference. Would I go long here? Not really. I don't have power dots, so I'm not going to take that risk. For me, it's about defined risk. If I can't define the risk, I cannot take that trade. That's what it's all about. So, from that perspective, yes. Will it make a difference? You betcha. Now, why do they rebalance their orders there? Let's take a look at the volume now. I think this is probably the one thing that will help you come to the conclusion that volume does play a major factor, but you don't have to look at volume in every single candle. No, only when the power dots come out, because otherwise you're going to confuse yourself. I know this because I did it. I'm trying to save you from that pain. Now granted, trading is painful and sometimes a necessary pain for you to understand that 
you don't always win, and sometimes you lose. So our volume indicator defines the depth of market in each candle. Ooh. Look at this. This candle right here, when the power dot formed, it showed two things. Their volume, 89. Now, good question. Why am I saying that I can see the volume in this market? When in actuality, the banks don't let you see their volume. You're right. They don't. So we've synthetically created it based on their order flow. Ooh. So what this does is basically tell you that the buying volume in this candle is 89 million. The selling volume is 69 million. And there's a difference of 20 million, which is bullish. Now, does that define that that is going to drive this trade long? No. This is a zero-sum game. 1 plus 1 equals 1. 1 minus 1 equals 0. So the way you look at volume is 1 minus 1 must balance out to 0. If it doesn't, the way in this case 89 minus 69 equals 20 positive, <coughs> then that tells you that there was 20 million in orders that were not filled by sellers. Why? The reason why is because the sellers have no interest in selling above this price level where the power dots have formed. And so as much as the buyers will bid this thing up, the sellers will never fill those orders because they can't afford to lose above this price anymore. And they're interested in driving price down. So in a resistance level, who's in charge? It's not the buyers. Oh, no, no. It's the sellers. They define whether they wish to sell and fill those orders or not. Next candle, 97 million. 86 million on the sell side. Oof, a difference of 11 million. Again, volume increased. Why didn't they break this price level? That's the first question should come to your mind. With so much bullish volume, why? Why, Ricardo? Why won't they trade above that price level? Because they have no interest. Because their interest is in weakening the euro and strengthening the yen. So they're offsetting their trades. This is where the high frequency trading takes place. This is it right here where the power dots form. No one seems to realize that except us. Look at this candle. It increases even more. 101 million on the buy, 93 million on the sell, a difference of 8 million. With 8 million why more, why didn't they break above this any higher? Because the sellers aren't interested in filling those orders or selling above this price level. So am I defining what real volume is doing, how their, how their order flow is defining the direction of the trade? The answer is yes. And that's one of the benefits that NinjaTrader allows us, and that's why we use NinjaTrader for that specific reason. Where would my entry have been? Right after this pivot right here. See this little magenta dot? I would have thrown the kitchen sink here on this candle short. And before everyone else takes it, because you can see the volume indicator saying there is no volume. Well, are you sure you want to make that statement? Because my indicator right here in the data box is telling me that they are doing a tremendous amount of high-frequency trading in this small candle, which didn't move more than a pip. But they offset 101 million in orders. I don't know. Call me strange, call me psychotic, but numbers don't lie. Math does not lie. That's what makes the difference. The math will guide you. The math will lead you to understand how they're manipulating their order flow and their volume. And if you can learn to use that with the power dots, then everything else 
will just become second nature. And you will become the professional trader that you've dreamed of all this time. All these years of training and suffering that you've gone through will finally pay off. But you got to have faith, you got to take the leap, and you got to want it. And you have to put the time in it. You know, the training course that I give is a three-day training course, usually about three hours a day. But we don't do it consistently one day after another. No, no, no. You actually get to do a little bit of homework. So what I did is that I've done, I recorded a <coughs> course that you can view before we actually sit down and go over it. And I recorded it also for, you know, my students that have taken my three-day course and have bought the software because it's good for them to go over and over and over and over and over again. Repetition is good, not bad. So if you go over the same concepts over and over and over again, then you're going to learn two things. You're going to get rid of, you're going to get rid of the bad habits that you've had which do not allow you to see the real trade because you've never really been told what the real trade was because you couldn't really define it. So if I'm telling you to short a trade here, but you would have waited for them to have broken a, you know, a uh, moving average, would I have made my decision process off of the moving averages? No. No way. Why? Because the moving averages move based off of price action. There is no price action here. Not one. Nothing defined this trade from the moving averages. Nothing. Yet our indicator did define it. And then guess what? Then the volume dropped. Oh, like a stone. Perfect balance. 48 million long, 48 million short, zero to zero. They were done balancing their book. And then guess what? Cha-ching. Short, 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 more pivots. Short, 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 more pivots. Look how they follow the trend stop. It's a beautiful thing. And you get 146 pips. A great outcome. So, yes, will it make the difference for you? Yes. Has it made the difference for some of you? Yes, it has. I know this because I've, I've had conversations with you. Will it get you consistency? Yes. It will get you to consistently look at the market from a different perspective that you've looked at it. And I'm not telling you not to incorporate other indicators that you've used. No, by no means am I saying that. However, it will just reconfirm information to you from a much more consistent and affirmative level. That will make a difference for you in your trades. So, how do you get involved? Good question. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put some information here in the chat room. Number one, if you want to participate in the in the uh, European session, email me and I will send you the link. Now, we are going to be changing a few things next week. I'm going to be sending out an email to everyone that has a software that we will be having an Asian session Wednesdays from 6 p.m. Eastern to 8, 8.30 p.m. Eastern. And then that same night, we're going to be doing the European session. But for those of you that have the software, I'm going to give you a bonus. I'm going to give you an additional trading session where we look for live trades. You're going to get an email. You're going to get to sign up for it. For those of you that do not have the software and wish to join us, you can email me, and I'm going to charge you for it. And the charge is $197 a month. Like I said, I'm not cheap, but I really, really know what I'm doing. And if you want to learn how to trade, then you need to be there. Don't believe me? Come to the European session. The European session is free. The report, uh, for those of you that have a software, we'll probably have it ready by next week uh, for you guys. And it will define 
two things. The days that you should be trading, the news releases that you should be paying attention to so you can find those setups, and the days that you shouldn't be trading at all. Now, I'm not saying that you can't find trades every day. Oh, yes, you can find trades every single day. If that's what you're looking for, yes, the software will do it. Can this software be used to trade other markets? Yes. We've designed the software by accident. It adapts to futures, stocks, and forex. I'd say that's pretty spectacular. Let me get back to the home page. Okie dokie. Well, for both of us, of course, but I will work with you. So again, this is my email. If you're looking to learn how to make 100 pips on up per week, then definitely, you definitely want to join us. Even if you just followed me in the room during the European session and the Asian session, and you take the trades that we show you live on those days, you're out to make about 300 or 400 pips a month. That makes a difference. Tell me who does that. My Skype is Cardo at PFG because I used to work for PFG. And my telephone is 818-431-1357. So if you're really serious about learning how to trade, if you're really serious about learning how to successfully trade this new environment, which is a digital platform. We are in a currency war. We are in a financial war of the highest order. It isn't going to get any easier. Life is going to get harder. So you can either learn to supplement your income through trading and eventually, hopefully, succeed well enough to replace your income and finally enjoy the financial freedom that you've desired. Or you can stay the way you are. You can make the effort or not. It will not change my lifestyle. I have figured this out. I'm showing people how to figure this out. And I'm not going to be selling a lot of licenses. I've limited this to 300 licenses. I've already sold a number of them. So take advantage now because the minute that I meet my number, that's it. I'm done. And no one will ever see this type of technology again. So take advantage. <clears throat> uh, I've sold over 50 so far. Yeah. Hey, you know, certain people know a good thing when they see it. That makes a difference. You have it. You like it. You understand it. You know, um, so for those of you that have it, you know the power behind the information that we provide. It is unmatched. The training that we give is complete because you're not getting a course from a retail perspective. You're getting a course from an institutional insider perspective, which is what I'm giving you. So you finally get to understand the reasoning, the decision process that the banks are using to trade what the prop traders are doing for the banks, why they're doing it, and why they're allowing these algorithms to work the way they work. So, yes, we are defining trading in a whole different level, but we're giving you the edge that you didn't have before. So you can either take advantage now or miss out. Those of you that saw that this was what you needed, it's because you've been through everything out there and you came to the conclusion that what we have to offer is the final frontier to volume price analysis through or an order flow trading. This is it. This is where we put it all together.
it all becomes clear as a picture. I'll give you an example. When you look at a trade, what do you look at? I'll tell you what I look at. I look at trading from a perspective that because I used to be a musician when I was very young, I look at candlesticks as if they were musical notes. So to me, if it's not playing a musical note that I'm looking for, I'm not interested. But if it's playing a beautiful piece of music, and I know what that piece of music sounds like, and it may sound like Andrea Bocelli, because I love Andrea Bocelli. He's a great singer. I'm actually going to go see him in concert in the next few months here in L.A. I love hearing the way he sings. You know, he's a blind tenor, but he has such a gift. When he sings, his voice is magical. That's exactly what I look for in a trade. It has to be magical. Now, if you're an art connoisseur and you like art and you like visuals, then it has to paint a million-dollar picture. And that's exactly what this software does. It paints a million-dollar picture that will make a million-dollar difference in your trading. Why? Because you're not going to make the same mistakes that you made before. You are actually going to see what these thieves are actually doing. Oh, my God. That is what makes the difference. Now, you're not going to make a 1,000 pips every week. You're not. But you can make between 100 and 200 pips a week. It is possible. I've shown you how to do it in one trading session. In one trading session, sometimes we make between 100 to 200 pips in two hours. In two hours. Oh, you did. <laughs> so, good for you, Felix. So basically, if I'm showing you that, doesn't it make sense to take advantage and jump in? Jump in with two feet. Let me tell you something. There is a parachute waiting for you. And it's going to take you to that landing site where you've been dreaming of landing for all this time. It's a beautiful thing. Let me tell you something. There is no better emotion than knowing when you have the advantage. When you're on the VIP list that these guys don't want you to be. Knowing the fact that I'm on the VIP list makes me feel so good inside. Believe me. My wife tells me that sometimes I'm a little crazy. But I tell her, if you knew what I knew, then you would understand. But it's okay. You don't, and I don't expect you to. This is my job. It's my industry. It's my, it's my, uh, my hobby. It's my job. It's, you know, it's my love. It's what I love to do. I love to trade. If you love to trade, then you will love the software. <laughs> Your wife doesn't care, Felix. <laughs> My wife doesn't care either. <laughs> so, yes, you know, can we make a difference? Yes. Can you make a difference? Yes. You need to act on it, though. Don't think about it too much. Your time may run out. So that's all that I have to share with you today. I wish you a very great weekend. We will be posting the video for the London session, for the European session this week, and we will be posting those trades and sending you an email so you can review what we did on that day. And like I said, if anything, it's a learning process. It'll take you a little bit of time, but you will get it. It will make sense. It'll click. You'll have that aha moment. You know, we all live for that. Aha! <laughs> That's what my dad does when I explain something to him. And nothing to do with, with trading, believe me. But he goes, aha! <laughs> so yes, you'll have that aha moment. I will guide you and show you everything that I know in this market.
because I want you to succeed. I want you to, to be happy. It took me 12 years to come to this level of satisfaction, this level of accomplishment. And I'm sharing it with you. So take advantage. Send me an email. Give me a call. Skype me. Again, I'll put my email here one more time. Don't be afraid. I don't bite. If anything, you will find that I'm the one person that will listen to you and help you. Because I know the journey that you've been through. I walked in your shoes. No one understands you or your pain more than I do. Believe me when I tell you. My telephone number is 818-431-1357. And my Skype, I'll type it in as well one more time. I wish you a very happy weekend. I wish you success. And I look forward to seeing you Monday morning at the same time, 9 a.m. Eastern. Have a great one. And thank you for joining us at Phoenix Trading Strategies. Have a great day.